Hi, I'm Nigel. I'm a product manager at Oracle and I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about zone maps and attribute clustering. These features are new to 12C, specifically 12102, and they're really targeted at larger databases, VLDB, data warehousing type environments. Um, they're designed fundamentally to improve query performance and scalability too, and they do that by reducing the amount of data you need to read to satisfy particular queries. So we'll go into a little bit about the type of queries I'm talking about and then how we, how we uh, solve those sorts of problems. Um, it's worth saying right at the outset that these, uh, these features are transparent to the applications, so you're not going to have to start rewriting queries or anything like that. They are they're fully transparent. Think of them rather like compression or partitioning. They're attributes of tables and storage structures that, that are just used by queries uh, transparently, used by the Oracle Optimizer to improve things. Um, what I'm going to do is start by looking at how we access data in an Oracle database. And then from then on, we can see pretty clearly how we can optimize things and make things better. So at the very basic level, if we start with a table, the easiest way of looking for rows and matching a particular query is simply to read all of the rows, scan the entire table. So that's a table scan, of course. So uh, in particular with analytical queries, this works really well. So we go select from our table, for example, different regions in our sales table, for, ex for example, California. We'll read through our table looking for the Californian rows, and that matches our queries. So table scanning those circumstances can be pretty good. The overhead of looking through all the rows might not be uh, too high. It might be acceptable for our particular query because we're looking at most, we need to look at most of the rows anyway. In transactional systems, that's not necessarily the case. So for example, if we need to look at a particular sales transaction, we're only going to maybe pull one or two rows from the sales table. If that is the case, we're in a different situation because the, the, the scan in that case is, is a big overhead. We're looking at all the rows rather than the one or two that we want. Now, of course, typically in a transactional system, we have indexes. So we create an index, and that's great for the transactional system because we're looking at a particular transaction. We go through the index and hit the single row that we need. So it's nice and quick. In the analytical case, it's not quite so straightforward because in there, in there, if we go through the index, we're going to be reading through the index, fetching a row, reading through the index, fetching another row, one at a time. So that, in fact, can be worse than using a table scan. Luckily for us, of course, we don't generally need to worry too much about this because the optimizer, the Oracle optimizer, knows um, the best plan. It will know whether an index, an individual row fetch is a good, good idea or whether a table, span, table scan itself is better. So we leave that to the Oracle optimizer, but that's the sort of choice it makes underneath the covers for us. So what if we need to improve the performance of the scanning query? So we have a query that's going to scan our table, but we want it to run faster. What options do we have for that? Well, what we could do is simply scan more quickly. So we can, for example, throw infrastructure at it, use something like Exadata, which can scan rows extremely quickly. So that's one way of achieving that. Uh, another way we can do that is to run parallel query. So what we're essentially doing now is reading each piece of the table in parallel. So we'll be using a process to read that part, this part, this part, this part of the table. So the net result is that we'll have better query performance by essentially throwing machine resource at it. Another approach, one that's going to be familiar to a lot of you, is Oracle partitioning. So if we use partition pruning, what we can essentially do is, is use the database to organize rows together. So for example, if we partition our sales table by state and we search by state, we know now that we only need to, to search one region of the table, one partition of the table. So that's a really good way of reducing the amount of data we need to read in order to satisfy those sorts of queries. What if we need to go a bit further than that? What if we could just target really small regions in the table? So in other words, we, let's in this case assume we have a sales table, and that's partitioned by date. So we have maybe quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, and so on. What if we now want to search by California, for example, but we want to target that scan to a small region? We can now do that, and that's exactly what zone maps are for. 
zone maps will enable you to target transparently the regions of the table and scan those regions that are for the particular rows we're interested in. So bottom line, that's what zone maps are for. So how does that work? Well, what we can do is if we take a, a table and divide it into zones, and against each of those zones, we remember the minimum and maximum state values for each of those zones. And then we say search for California. We know we can skip the zones that don't include California. So in this case, we have a zone for Alabama to Delaware. We know California alphabetically is between Alabama and Delaware, so that we know that we can skip other zones that maybe have um, different letters of the alphabet that are not encompassed by California. So now we can target a California search just at that particular zone. So we can skip the rest of the table. So it's a really great way of zeroing in on the data that we need to find. So some of you will be familiar with Exadata storage indexes, which do a very similar thing. They do remember for particular regions of disk the minimum and maximum column values. So for example, in our sales table, it may remember the minimum and maximum value state, for example. So again, Alabama to Delaware, and then the smart scan will only read that part of the disk that represents, uh, that, that contains those rows. So how are zone maps different to that and what do they add? And it's worth pointing out at this point, in fact, that um, zone maps do work very well with storage indexes. They do work together, so they are complementary technologies, so they're not working against one another. But let's look now at a somewhat more complex example, a more real-world example, in fact. So now we have a sales table and a dimension table regions. So what we have now is a query that is going to query, for example, again, California. But now, California is made up of multiple regions. And importantly, there is no longer a state column in our sales table. So now, we have to run our query, match the relevant rows in the dimension table, and get a bunch of region IDs. And those are the region IDs we're going to scan for in our sales table. So we're going to, at, at the basic level, read through our entire sales table looking for the relevant region IDs that match California. How do we fix that? There's no, there's no capability in this case for the storage index to um, eliminate rows based on the search for California other than via the region IDs. So that's exactly what the zone maps give us the ability to do. So now what we're doing is dividing the uh, table into regions or zones that contain the uh, particular region IDs that represent maybe California, Delaware, Alabama, and so on throughout our table. That's what the zone map gives us the capability of doing. And in fact, it works uh, in somewhat wider than that. So in a star schema, a typical star schema, we have sales, products, regions, times, channels, those kinds of dimensions. The zone map gives us the capability of when we run queries using those different dimensions against our sales table, we can still target zones within that fact table. So that's what zone maps gives us the ability to do that. So just to summarize now that zone maps record the minimum maximum values for specific attributes. And you can, those attributes can be from dimension tables or they can be the, from the fact table itself. You can choose. So it gives you the ability to group together rows uh, depending on attribute values taken from star schemas or taken from your sales table. So attribute clustering is a table property. So we alter a table, add attribute clustering, and at that point, the rows that are associated, for example, with California will be grouped together. So we actually order rows dependent on the values, the attribute values in our dimension tables that are around our fact. So in this case, if we, for example, have California, we can make sure that all of the region IDs associated with California actually are together in the table. So we might have region ID 10, 
50, 1,400, but we can be sure that they can be grouped together because we're using attribute clustering. So attribute clustering gives us a way of grouping together our rows in our sales table dependent on all of these dimension attribute values or attribute values within the, the fact table itself. Attribute clustering is a property of the table, so when you add it, you don't immediately reorder the rows, so the rows stay in place. So you add the attribute clustering, the rows stay where they are. If you want to now reorder existing rows, you can move the table, or the most common use case is to move a table or partition at a time. So you'll move partition one, partition two, partition three, and as you do that, the rows will be reordered for you. So that's what, so essentially it's a way of retrofitting attribute clustering, if you like. Uh, the other thing worth noting, in fact, is that the zone map itself, the with materialized zone map, the zone map itself is a very compact structure. It's a small data structure. So it has the advantage over an index, for example, by being very small. So for sure, if you've got a, a lot of indexes that you are using to optimize queries, and those indexes are not particularly selective, then look at zone maps. They're a very good way of reclaiming some of that space from your database. So they're a good way of getting your dependency, if you like, on indexes down and reclaiming that space, giving you more capacity to store actual useful data. So again, if you look under pressure on, on volumes and you've got a lot of indexes, zone maps are really worth looking at. Uh, to give you an alternative to selecting and picking rows, particularly in those sort of analytical type queries, very quickly and effectively. So to summarize, um, if you want to speed up your queries, if you've got increasing data volumes or increasing requirements for concurrency, um, and you all want to say reduce the number of indexes you, you, you depend on, your database is large, so data warehouses, VLDB, those sorts of applications, look at zone maps with attribute clustering. They're definitely uh, able to help you in those sorts of environments. Where do you go next for more information? A very good place to start is the Oracle 12C Data Warehousing Guide. There's lots in there. There's two chapters dedicated to zone maps and attribute clustering. So you'll find lots of syntax examples in there, for example. It, it, there's, there's a lot in there to, uh, to digest. Uh, if you want more syntax, um, go to the online learning library. There's actually a little work through um, course there for you to try out these features. So if you want to get some hands on without having to read up on the syntax, it's all in there for you. So uh, that's about it from me and thanks for listening.